Hello, I'm Atuba George and today is Friday. Praise God. Listen to me. We are stepping into the month of May and something is surely going to happen in your life today. I know. How do I know? Because of what God has put in my heart to share with you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into that, can we call for that daily bread? Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. Now, say this with me. Say, Lord, everything I may have missed this month, according to your mercy, Lord, I receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, I was sharing something with you yesterday. And I told you yesterday, I'm sharing this because God is about to do a miracle in someone's life. And you're listening. You're watching me right now. So yesterday, I told you the testimony of how we moved to where we're staying right now. Now, the background of this was what, what, what was giving us the strength, I'll tell you. Number one, we believe the testimony of Jesus because now that word that came, came from Jesus. Between now and June, I'm going to open a door of finances for you. And when that money comes, you will move it for the house. I said, okay, I believe that. Now, the opportunity came, God says, go look for a house. And suddenly, I told you yesterday, a door seemed to be opening at the same time we found the house. So we felt that was there and suddenly the door was shut. Now, at that point, it is so easy to begin to tell yourself, maybe Satan is attacking my testimony. And then you look at the timing, because now, because God has said between now and June, I know if June ends and that doesn't happen, I know it's, not, it, it's likely not going to happen in July. It's likely not going to happen in August, till August. It, 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 has, it has to wait until a new season. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, this is what happens. But then sometimes you find God's children in situations where they don't know what happened. And then they are beginning to ask, what am I supposed to do now? Now, so all control our minds. Okay, so the house is there. We've given them time. The money hasn't shown up. What do we do? Now, someone may think, you know what? Why don't we go borrow money after it's the will of God? Now, we, we know that Jesus has said, now this is the testimony of Jesus. Take no thought for yourself. Say, what will I eat? Or clothes, what will I put on? Now, by the Spirit of God, we understand that clothes means covering. So it means, what, where will I live? Jesus has said, take no thought. So now, you find yourself in that place where you begin to think, should I go borrow money? Um, should I go do... You know what you're doing? You are taking thoughts. And the moment you begin to do that, you're introducing strife into your testimony. Or you're introducing strife into your faith. And the Lord is not going to take the glory for that thing. So I tell you what He will do. He will step out of that testimony. Because it doesn't carry His testimony. So I'm thinking, I can, I can actually borrow money. I can actually borrow money and get this thing done. If I borrow money and get this after, it's the will. I know this is the will of God. I know this is what God wants me to do. Maybe, hey, you don't understand. The children of Israel knew it was the will of God for them to enter the promised land. But they had to wait on God until He prepared them to enter the promised land the way he wanted them to enter. Listen, the promised land was a physical location. It was not a realm. It was not a place in the spirit that they would go until chariots would now come and carry them up there. Abraham had lived on that land. So they knew, they knew the land. 
So why didn't they just bulldoze their way in? No! You have to wait until God, and that, this is the mistake a lot of people have made. God promised them blessings and then they, you know, you know, God can tell you, hey, you walk in that firm. Oh, praise God. God said, I walk in that firm. And then from the day God said, you walk in that firm, you start going there. Is there any vacancy? Is there any vacancy? Is there any vacancy? Is there any vacancy? And then one day they say, oh, there's a vacancy. Oh, but uh, the man in charge, mm, that man is a very stubborn man. Oh, please, please, please. I need to see him. I need to see him. I need to see him. Okay, go and see him. And then he says, ah, you want to walk here? Yes. Mm. To get this job, I'll tell you the truth, many people are interested in this job. If you really want me to give it to you, then you go bring this amount of money. That will make me listen to you. Then you go back and say, hmm, well, God said, he has given them, I cannot lose this opportunity, because if I lose this opportunity, I'll miss God. That's what you think. So you go look for the money and pay for that job. Do you know what you've just done? You have spoiled the testimony in that job. You have walked away from the spirit of prophecy. Listen, it's not enough to hear the prophecy. You must yield to the spirit of prophecy for that prophecy to be fulfilled. Now, what does the spirit of prophecy do? It prepares you for the fulfillment of that prophecy. You know why? I'll tell you. It's not just about getting the job. It's not just about having a tag that I walk in that place. God told me I will get that job and hey, I'm walking there right now. That's not the testimony. The testimony is that there is something in that place that God wants you to do. There is something in that place that will advance you in fulfilling God's purpose. There is something about that place that connects with you. Now, if you don't yield to the spirit of prophecy to prepare you and wait for the spirit of prophecy to prepare the place, you know what's going to happen? You can physically get in there and fulfill nothing. You will get in there and then it's all dryness. You will get in there and at the end of the day, it will be as though God sent you to punish you there. You know what happened? You missed yielding to the spirit of prophecy. So, so, so we, we knew we, we couldn't borrow. We knew we couldn't go asking everybody. Um, see, oh, God told us we, we move, we've seen the house, but, but see, the, the time is go, getting closer and we don't know, we don't want to miss God. We did none of those things. In fact, I actually called the, 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 the owner of the house and I said, you know what? Um, this is what we're going to do. We're expecting some funds, but it, it looks like um, that door is shut for now. And we don't want to keep, we don't want to keep holding you. So this is what we're going to do. If you see someone else that you feel you can give the house to, you can go ahead and do so. But if what we're expecting comes before then, then surely we're going to call you. Yeah, we did that. So why did you do that? Yeah, because because we, we noticed it was now putting us under pressure. And that's not the way of the Lord. If God who is strong enough to fulfill his word, doesn't fulfill it, there is nothing you can do about it. You can't help him fulfill his word. That's one thing you need to understand. You can never help God fulfill his word. Your job is to relax. Keep the words in your heart and then be waiting because he says, allow patience to have her perfect work in you. Oh, but God told me this many years ago and, and I, I just feel, it, I'll tell you a problem. It's not because God has forgotten that word. It's because you are so busy trying to fulfill that word and you have not yielded yourself to be prepared by the spirit of prophecy for that work. That's your problem. Because you see, you see folks, you believe God wanted you to go somewhere and he provided the funds for you to get there. And then you get there, now you start struggling to maintain that place. You know what's happening? 
You saw the prophecy, but you didn't get prepared and you cannot prepare yourself. The only thing you can do for yourself is to literally believe in the spirit of prophecy. And when you believe in the spirit of prophecy, you know what the Bible says? He that believeth does not make haste. So one of the things you must believe is if God cannot do it by himself, then let him become a failure. I'm telling you, that's what I told myself. I said, borrowing, no way. Begging, no way. If he doesn't provide, I told my wife this one. I said, you know what? This thing, I'm not going to think one moment about this thing. I won't. My mind is off it. Why? He spoke. And he gave the time frame. We are still within the time frame. So until we get to, I'm not even going to be asking myself, have you done something wrong? Have you missed God? I won't ask myself that question one bit. You know why? Because every day I talk with him and he's not told me, son, you have missed the way. He's not told me that. And at the right time, because for example, the provision of that money is not on you. Is on the one who spoke. If God tells you to do something and that thing involves money, never you think that it's in your place to get that money. Never. I said never. Never. The moment you are struggling to get that money, you are not in the will of God where that thing is concerned. I'm telling you the truth. And let me tell you this. It is better. It is better. It takes you 10 years to get into God's plan for your life. That would have taken you one year. But it is better you wait for those 10 years for God to usher you in than to rush by yourself to enter that place within six months and be happy that you have entered. You can enter that place within those six months, but the rest of the years in that place will be hell for you. Why? Because you were not made fit to enter it. There is a place for preparation. Everything, if God tells you, I'll give you a car, that car becomes a ministry. So in your mind, God said, he will give me a car. And then maybe he even told you the name of the car. He told you the type of car. And then you are just thinking of how you're going to be driving that car around town and be cruising on it. And, and you know, that's all you think about. But hey, the truth is this. You see that car that God told you, it has become a ministry. And you know what? That car must not have an accident. That car must not be stolen. That car must carry in itself a testimony. And do you know what? That car must carry you to certain places that you need to be. Now that's what God thinks. But all you can think about is closing that. Oh man, when I get that car, I'm going to take it to my pastor and show my pastor, sir, ah, God has answered. Then I'll take it to my parents. Oh, I'll take it to that my, that my in-law that said I'll not become anything. I'll drive the car. Hey, when I land. That's all you're thinking about. And God is thinking beyond that. You know why? God have said that on the 15th of so-so month next year, you will appear in certain place, in a certain place with this car. And the angels in that place have been informed that so-so person is going to come and he's going to be coming in this car. When he comes, open this door for him. Now, you don't wait for the Lord to prepare you to make those contacts. You don't wait for the Lord to prepare you. Sometimes it might even be an education. So, so, so you see, God is telling you, I'm going to give you something. And okay, so why are you preparing? And then God says, see, I want you to go learn this thing. Me, learn. Why am I learning? After all, God has said he has going to, so I don't need this thing. No, you have to follow, follow, follow what God is leading. Because he needs to prepare you. That preparation is what is going to help you fulfill the ministry of that thing that God has said to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope these words have been a blessing to you. Listen, I want to invite you to join us 12 midnight for West African time as we, we begin our prayers and 24 hour fast. We're, we're going to be fasting throughout. Praise God. Don't miss it. The, the Zoom link is on your screen. If you need further information, you can send us a message and we will get back to you. I want to pray for you right now. Father, 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is someone who's believing, you're actually believing God for a house. I just heard the Lord say, that's who you were talking to. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive it right now. And it's going to come from the Lord. It's not going to come from your own sweats. The Lord will not only lead you to the house, He will lead you to the finances and the supply He Himself has made for that house. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, as we step into the month of May, these things are fulfilled in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And every expectation you have for the month of April, and every expectation you've had from the beginning of this year, I declare even today, miracles are taking place in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time with me. And I hope you have really been blessed. We're looking forward to a wonderful month as we step into the month of May. And I know God is going to do marvelous things, not just in your life, but we'll see it in the children of God. God bless you. Bye.